How Hush Puppy was arrested and jailed by the FBI for fraud. Famous, wealthy, and the richest Nigerian big boy who sent ripples across the internet after discovering that the rich, young, and famous billionaire, Gucci Master, was not making his money just through influencing. That was just a farce. His actual source of income was online fraud. But how was he arrested? Or rather, which are the exact conditions that led to his arrest? Had he overplayed his hand by allegedly defrauding or conspiring to defraud commercial and investment banks in Malta, a New York law firm, a UK bank, the English Premier League, or a Qatari businessman? Well, there's more to it. Many more moving parts, red accomplices, and this video shares an account of what happened and how Hush Puppy finally got arrested. Social media, especially Instagram, is one of the most toxic spaces. You may argue that Instagram can be good if you follow the right accounts, but how do you know who sits behind the screen and if they are masked or not? Because in the case of Hush Puppy and many other self-made millionaires flaunting their wealth online, either the money is obtained illegally or through ungodly ways, as was revealed in the Dubai Porta Potty stories. In Hush's case, he lived large in the most flamboyant home in Dubai and wore designer clothes pretty much all the time. He lived large and claimed that he could do that through his hard work as an influencer for the big brands he always wore, also claiming that by putting in the time and right efforts, he'd become so successful. But as it turns out, Hush got his money from money laundering schemes, which featured large groups of other online fraudsters and hackers who stole from thousands and millions of unsuspecting victims, individuals, and companies. And so, all his followers and fans who ever wondered how he got all that money finally learned the truth when Abbas was arrested and pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud victims through several cyber scams, specifically the BEC scams that resulted in the cumulative loss of at least $24 million. While this report is a little contradictory, since the unsealed FBI report showed that he was arrested on the 9th of June 2020, his official indictment was on June 20th, 2020, after Hush changed his tune and agreed to plead guilty. This announcement was made on the 20th of June by the U.S. Secret Service that their investigations into the multi-million dollar, multinational online fraud scam scheme led by several fraudsters with ties to Nigeria and the rest of the world has finally gotten a break after they arrested one of the ringleaders, Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy. This was a follow-up to the June 10, 2019 news report by Fox News in which they noted that they were investigating the Nigerian crime ring, better known as the Yahoo Boys. According to the Los Angeles FBI field office, Mr. Ramon Olorunwa Abbas, popularly known as Hush Puppy, was one of the high-profile international money launderers who played a huge role in the global BEC scam, which the FBI regarded as a scheme that had been plaguing Americans for months. While his celebrity status, apparent wealth, and the ability to create connections that seep deep into the legitimate organizations ultimately led to a large number of schemes abroad and in the US. In the announcement, Hush's arrest meant a huge blow to the extensive international network of hackers and money launderers. It also served as a critical warning to other hackers to defraud victims. These crime rings may have started before the pandemic, but they sure did exploit the COVID-19 pandemic committing crimes in several U.S. states, resulting in significant losses, often in the hundreds of millions of dollars. One of the things that led to his arrest was his Google account, rayhushpuppy at gmail.com, which was linked to his Instagram and Snapchat accounts. His phone records and social media information were a treasure trove that not only proved Hushpuppy's involvement in the sophisticated online fraud and money laundering cases, but also showed that he lived large because of all of the money they defrauded unsuspecting clients. Hush Puppy was not as cautious as he should have been. So when the FBI arrested Alamari, the infamous Canadian online money launderer who could make money disappear from the world's largest financial systems and other institutions, there was no doubt that his conversations with Hush Puppy would come to light at any point. After all, Alamari and Hush Puppy participated in laundering millions from different people and groups, such as Malta's Valletta Investment and Commercial Bank. The conspiracies to defraud a UK bank and a team on the English Premier League, a law firm in New York, and a Qatari businessman, just to name a few, or rather, the known, cases. In all these scam cases, they made off with way over $24 million, 
and his cut in each of the transactions is what financed his affluent lifestyle. Besides Alumari, Hush's arrest also came about after three other accomplices he engaged with were arrested. This happened in early 2020. After his co-conspirators were arrested, these three co-conspirators, a Kenyan, Abdularam Imran Juma, 28, also called Abdul, who was Hush's connection and made the introduction between Hush and the Qatari businessman. Next is a Nigerian guy, Kelly Chibuzo Vincent, 40, who played the role of a banker and financial consultant when they defrauded a Qatari businessman. Then there's the Brooklyn-based Yusuf Adekinka Enifwashi, also called AJ, 26, whose role in the scheme was to pose as Malik and make the phone call to the Qatari businessman posing as Malik, a Wells Fargo director. The other accomplices were New York-based Rukiyat Motunraya Fashola, also known as Moreo. Finally, from Linden in New Jersey, Bolatito Tawakalitu Agbabiaka, also called Bolamide, aged 34. Both were the money guys, and they were involved in setting up bank accounts in which the money would be deposited. Agbabiaka was particularly a significant part of the money moving. She not only used her bank account at Capital One to funnel some of the money, but was also aware of how best to transfer the money to different bank accounts in the US and abroad to Nigeria. She also used cashier's checks to ensure that the money was undetected. The cashier's check was to the tune of $50,000. But this was just what we were privy to following their scam case against the Qatari businessman. These five individuals were all conspirators that would defraud the Qatari businessman of about $1.1 million. Abbas used some of this money, specifically $230,000, to purchase a Richard Mill RM1103 rose gold and platinum watch. Perhaps because they cooperated with the feds, Enifawashi, Agbabiaka, and Fashola were released on bond. This is the case because the law dictates that in indictments and complaints that allege the defendants have committed crimes, the defendants were presumed innocent until it was proven beyond a reasonable doubt that they were guilty. Inifawashi was arrested in New York on July 22nd, as were Agbabiaka and Fashola in New Jersey and New York, respectively. In addition to these conspirators, the Abbas's online presence and phone records all played a role in his arrest. Also, the conspiracy counts further note that alleged indictments carry a maximum statutory sentence of at least 20 years in federal prison, while aggravated identity theft cases carried a sentence with a mandatory two-year term in prison. But these were not the only pawns. The court documents also revealed the existence of some form of dispute among these co-conspirators. The documents allege that Vincent was prompted to contact the victims, claiming that Juma and Abbas were part of the fraud case and that after the two made contact, Abbas allegedly planned for Vincent to be arrested and jailed in Nigeria by 46-year-old Nigeria's Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Alaji Kiari. In the affidavit, Kiari is said to have arranged for the arrest and jailing of Vincent at Abba's request, and after, Kiari sent Vincent's photos to Abbas. It's also alleged that Kiari sent Abbas his bank details, to which Abbas would deposit the bribe upon Vincent's imprisonment. While these conspirators led to his arrest, Hush Puppy's social media presence played a critical role in his arrest. The FBI noted that they found much information about Hush Puppy on his Instagram account. Although he never acknowledged the source of his wealth or riches on Instagram, he always showed off his lifestyle on the platform, before, after, or during defrauding cases. And though he eventually changed his bio to read real estate developer rather than billionaire Gucci master, they could match his email accounts, calls, texts, social media, and other phone records. They also matched his passport details and the rest of his identification documents. They all revealed that the man behind the flashy Instagram account, the Dubai condo, and the online defrauding communications belonged to Hush Puppy better known as Ramon Olorunwa Abbas. His opulent lifestyle, the private jets, luxury cars, designer clothes, luxury custom watches, and the globetrotting was financed by the BEC scams he and his cronies ran around the globe.